It looks like John Paul J.P. Miller is getting a tad bit desperate as people started to investigate him after Michael Miller's suspicious passing. And it turns out J.P. impersonating Micah might not be so far-fetched after all. So I'm Joseph Morris. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. So, of course, people started to take a closer look at JP after Micah passed away. I mean, it was revealed that he allegedly put his paws on her to the point she told cops that if there was ever a bullet put in her head, it was from him. I mean, the scene where her body was found looked so staged because the bullet casings were 40 meters away from her body in a body of water with absolutely no currents. And there was bruising all over her body, according to both her dad, Michael Francis, and her sister, Anna Francis. In fact, Anna said that the coroner pretended like they didn't see the bruises all over her sister's body. It sounds like sort of like a cover-up that involved all these officials. And... It turns out, according to Michael Francis, Micah's dad, there were voices at the end of the 911 call as if there was a struggle. And the full 911 call appeared on TikTok, and it does sound like there is some sort of struggle going on at the end of the 911 call. In fact, the bruises on her body were consistent with someone who was holding her arm behind her and the gun in the other hand and making her, you know unalive herself there's also other suspicious details like a car that looked like it was following micah in her final moments one of the witnesses the fisherman had a story that kept changing and he was a key witness who pretty much controlled the entire narrative for weeks and then people started taking a closer look at him because the fisherman said he heard a cry and a shot go off then took micah's belongings out of the scene i mean he saw her belongings and then just like took them away and apparently went to go buy a lighter and no one has tracked down the footage from the corner store mcleland's where he bought this supposed lighter then he apparently brought the belongings back to give it to police. I mean, this is a huge change from his original story where he said he just handed over her belongings. In fact, a groundskeeper at the Lumber River State Park where she was found said that the fisherman came back in a completely different vehicle that didn't have a boat attached to it. So what happened to the boat that this fisherman was in? I mean, was the fisherman working for JP? These are the questions I have. The fisherman also said he called his friend at 1.27 p.m. to report the shot he heard. But Micah's phone call to 911, where she warned them that she was going to unalive herself, was a full two hours later. And it turns out that the 1.27 p.m. time was also the time Micah showed up to the gas station when she was last caught on camera and people actually think that it's possible that she was kidnapped at this gas station then brought up the lumber river and where she was forced to do what she did so this 1 27 p.m time is actually very interesting that he would mention that particular time because did he actually make a phone call at that time Apparently, he deleted all these phone calls, but was that phone call towards his friend saying, hey, Micah pulled up to the gas station. Let's execute our plan. So JP's alibi was that he was conveniently at a soccer match two and a half hours away and was proved by his vehicle with tinted windows on a highway camera. I mean, this isn't the best picture ever and anybody can be in that car. And it turns out a woman who was with JP vouched for his alibi and said that he was at the game. And apparently a lot of people think this woman is romantically involved with JP. So she would obviously have some sort of bias, right, for his alibi. 
The game finished at 11.30 a.m. and Micah's phone call was at 2.55 p.m. So it was possible he could have made his way all the way back to Lumber River State Park and had a hand in what went down. Not saying he did, but I think the cops need to re-examine this entire case. And lots of people feel that the final 911 call was artificial intelligence. And it turns out that JP's lawyer, Tom Winslow, allegedly owns a property facing the Lumber River that takes you exactly to that spot where Micah was found. So there's this theory that the people at the gas station where she was last seen kidnapped her, brought her on this boat, brought her all the way up the Lumber River to stop at Tom Winslow's house where they could finish and drop her off at the state park just up the stream. And also that Tom allegedly is an expert in artificial intelligence himself. So it gave me chills to learn that these leaked text messages showed that Micah was scared since JP was impersonating one of her stepdaughters. So this pretty much shows that JP is capable of pretending to be somebody he is not allegedly, according to Micah. So it says here, less than two months before her passing, Micah Miller texted the mother of her stepchildren in concern for the kid's safety. So this is from Micah Miller's burner phone writing, quote, Hey, Ali, it's Micah. I need to talk to you ASAP for the safety of your kids. Please call me. You almost free? End quote. With a screenshot of text from Ali's daughter. So Ali is JP's ex-wife and Ali actually went on record to say that she only felt comfortable leaving her kids with Micah, who used to be their babysitter who JP cheated on with, but with Micah because JP was that unhinged. And this was in the most recent court documents about an emergency custody filing because Ali did not want her kids with JP. It goes on to say, this part shook me. In the months leading up to her passing when Micah was separated from J.P. Miller, Micah received a bunch of texts from her stepdaughter's phone. Micah and J.P.'s ex-wife, Allie, believe the texts were from J.P. pretending to be his daughter to lure Micah back. Yeah, and these are some serious mind games. I mean, it says here, quote, Mom says boys are dumb, but I know dad loves you a lot. I've never seen him cry so much. If he asks you, we talked about lashes. I have to delete this. I'm praying too without dad that you will come home. He's crying so loud right now. Can you talk to him, please? I promise he loves you. He has your pictures all over the house. He won't do anything with us. He just keeps crying. He said he's sorry and it's your birthday. So you're not coming home ever? What can I tell dad to do so you can come home? Micah writes a bunch of crying faces saying it's gone too far. And then the stepdaughter replies, quote, I don't know what that means, but I prayed with dad for you to come home, end quote. And yeah, these are just very clearly manipulative texts that Ali and Micah believe weren't from the stepdaughter or Ali's daughter, but from JP to get Micah back home. So if he's capable of impersonating a stepdaughter to manipulate people around him, who's to say he wouldn't be able to stage a 911 call. I mean, there's ways now that you can actually speak into like a microphone and then it just transforms your voice into the particular voice you want it to be. So it's easy to clone voices nowadays and it'll be easy to fake a 911 call. But because people are questioning Pastor J.P. Miller, he actually started to send out cease and desist letters. So this one's to... Natasha Cooper, who is from Natasha Cooper True Crime. And he may want a better lawyer because down here it says, if you do not have any supporting information for the statements being made, those statements will be considered defamatory, fabricated, hearsay, or simply opinion. So, end quote. It says here, hearsay, H-E-R-E-S-A-Y. And it's supposed to be spelled H E. A-R-S-A-Y. So this lawyer seems a little unprofessional. Also, having an opinion isn't defamatory. So if you look at a bunch of facts, like the body being, you know, 40 meters away from the shell casings, bruises all over her body, what she said about a bullet ending up 
in her head before she passed away. The trackers on the cars, the apparent razor blades in her tires that were in the police report, her being stalked beforehand. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's okay to actually question, you know, JP's potential involvement. I'm not saying that he was directly involved, but one can almost assume that he was indirectly involved at least by destroying Micah Miller's psyche. And I also keep forgetting to mention that her body was cremated very, very fast. So I personally believe that there should be Micah's law that if there's an estranged husband who has a restraining order out on him, that husband shouldn't be allowed to make the decision for his wife's cremation. Yeah, so this lawyer, Russell Belong, appears to be conflating opinion versus fact as somehow defamatory when they're actually quite separate. You're allowed to have an opinion. Also, apparently JP was seen out and about impersonating Spider-Man. So this is him just walking up to his house in a head-to-toe Superman costume. Micah Miller's family also revealed that JP allegedly takes medication for schizophrenia and that Micah wasn't the crazy one. She never had any issues before meeting JP and he's actually the crazy one. And so I hope this kind of paints a little more clear picture of who JP is. And like I said, maybe he's not directly involved in Micah's passing, but he had a hand in somehow destroying her mental health. So again, Justice for Micah, I really hope that there is a Micah law pass where you cannot just cremate your estranged wife. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting my face here. And in case you're wondering where Gabby is, it's like really hot in my studio and I just wanted her to be comfortable. So I hope you guys stay cool and let's roll the outro. Bye guys.